like to review this new ramp that's put in uh, recently in this fantastic new building here. It's, it's a beautiful building and, and the access is awesome. You can access this building in, in many areas, in many ways. It's great. But there's some design features that make it difficult for actually access in itself. For instance, I'd like you to just see, see with these discrete stainless steel TGSIs here. See these, these guys, the little buttons. This is, the, this is the pathway, and here is the building one. Look, just go down, see that's the building line, all the way, or the, or the perimeter, the boundary of this facility. So TGSIs here are supposed to be set inside that boundary, right? But we've also got this grate here, which is a problem for achieving that, and the ramp itself appears to be about 300 to 600 millimetres too long. And what I mean by that is, back over there, that ramp should have started 600 millimetres earlier, then all of this would have been in the right place. Now, to me, that's a planning issue because that's those kind of decisions happen in the design phase. So there's a huge car park under here, and there might be a reason why the ramp was cut short because of those reasons, and they've tried to meet conformance with the standards and the building code because of that. But this is the, I suppose, the concession that was made. The other problem is here is that this bollard should not be here. Now it's here for a practical reason, I don't want a car to drive down there. And as you can see, it's a removable bollard, that's fantastic. But the bollard is supposed to go, or better put, the tactile ground surface indicators here need to be before the bollard. So they need to be before the warning, right? So here, that bollard should either be back here or further back on the street. Now we don't want it on the street, do we? Because then someone could walk into it. So again, it's one of those design features that haven't been thought about. And just as a bit of a segue to this bollard, why it's a hazard is down here is the accessible path, right? Into the building or coming out of the building, up the ramp and bang onto the pathway or vice versa. This is an obstacle. And it's, if you look back here, check this out. The, the bollard almost blends into the background. Look at that. Can you see how I'm just, if I'm a blind or a person with low vision, this is what's gonna happen. And the TGSIs here, if I was using my cane or using the remaining amount of sight that I have, which luminous contrast is questionable here, but this here is confusing because I think that that's a path I can walk in and I can't. I'm gonna hit that bollard. So one of the practical things that could be done is that this area of TGSIs here, these, these discrete ones, they could be removed. This could become yellow, so it could be seen. So it's a bit of a fix up. It's not using the code as we have it, but it would certainly make this space, the entrance and exit using this ramp much more safer. So the circulation space at the top of a ramp and at the bottom of a ramp, or whether that's a stair, we need to consider in our design and in our planning that these kind of functions, this kind of circulation space, that there is enough space to not only achieve the usefulness or the utility of what we're designing and what we're wanting to achieve, but it's executed correctly, that all the people in the vast field of what's required, that they're aware of why it's there, why it needs to be there, and the problem that it solves for people who have a permanent, a partial, or temporary disability. But stuff like this, on tactiles, and stuff like that, sticking out into the pathway, non-conforming, non-compliant, and hopefully they can be remedied. <laughs>